Hello, and welcome to today's MTC Studio broadcast. My name is Kevin Orbaker. I am an MTC architect here in Microsoft in our Irvine campus. Today, we'd like to take a look at five ways to unlock value from your data. But before we get started with that, I'd like to point out a few things. Uh, there is a Q&A window available to you to type any questions you might have throughout today's session. Uh, we will do our best to answer those questions uh, as the session goes on throughout the day. Also, if you want to have a better view of the, the presentation, you can maximize the video window uh, up there in the, the video itself. So if we take a look at an organization and what really makes organizations thrive and grow in today's uh, industries, it, we really are looking at companies that take advantage of data, both data they have or data they may gather, or, or data that's coming in the future that they may not even have today. But really, taking advantage of that data, um, being able to derive new insights and new uh, ideas from the data they have. In the past, that's been extremely difficult to do, but with today's technology and what we have here at Microsoft, we're making it increasingly easier for organizations to actually get at that data, to understand the data and derive insights, and really go from uh, reactive uh, data analytics to predictive and prescriptive data analytics. So how does a company achieve more value from that data? Well, in the past, we've taken a look at more traditional systems um, using uh, transactional databases, or maybe even an enterprise data warehouse. But really, we've had data that's been possibly siloed and in, in, in ver various data marts, uh, and brought that in as time progresses, and, and maybe in within 24 or 48 hours, we have some data that can be viewed and, and put into dashboards and reports. But really, it's been a reactive uh, process to our, our data. Uh, as Data becomes more and more available to organizations. The cost of storing and uh, transacting data in, in larger volumes and at greater speeds uh, becomes more achievable by organizations, large or small. Uh, then we start looking at more innovative ways to address the data. And quite honestly, even innovation that we thought a couple of years ago was was high tech, like Hadoop, for instance, is now much more commonplace and available to or small organizations and mid-sized organizations to take advantage of. What was once considered very difficult uh, tasks, such as machine learning or streaming data analytics, real-time operational reporting, uh, is now something that's achievable by any size organization, whether you're small, big, or in between. And as we start moving up the chain, as we start deriving more and more innovation into our technology stack, we achieve more value from that data. Technology such as in-memory computing and Internet of Things, uh, as well as machine learning, are all part of the stack that really allows you as an organization to achieve more value from that data. And that's really what we're focused on here today and in this series, is uh, providing new insights into the data that you have um, in a way that makes it easily available to any size organization and really allows them to, um, to understand that data uh, faster than ever before. So today I'd like to introduce my colleague, David Brown. He is in our Dallas MTC. He will be talking specifically on how SQL Server 2016 and new innovations that we've made available for you uh, in that product stack, really allowing you to achieve more insights into your data and really deriving those five key uh, technologies and services we have uh, and allowing you to get more data, for, or, sorry, for more value from that data. Uh, so I'll turn it over to David. David? Thanks, Kevin. Hi, everybody. I'm David Brown. Well Welcome to the Microsoft Technology Center in Dallas. I'm happy to be with you here today to talk about five ways to unlock value from your data. Let's get started. The explosion of data sources today driving a boom in the volume of data. It's important that 
organizations learn how to easily and quickly unlock value from that data. So I talked to a lot of customers about, about this, and here's five ways that they're thinking about unlocking that value with SQL Server 2016. Number one is operational reporting from OLTP databases, from your transactional databases, getting to that data quicker to get business insight and make decisions. Two, advanced analytics right in the database. Being able to predict the future and run analytical models and statistical analysis right close to the data. Number three, getting insights from big data sources, right? vast uh, data lakes that you never were able to get insights from before. Four, letting the users into the data, empowering the users to get directly to the data and, and create their own business insights and make decisions. And number five, mobile reports and dashboards, pushing out the analysis and the data to the users where, where they live on their mobile devices. Let's get started with number one, operational reporting directly from transactional databases. Business value here, faster time to insight, less cost, fewer copies of the data. Now, we've been on a journey in SQL Server over multiple releases to enable this scenario starting from non-locking queries with uh, row versioning, uh, resource governor to, to control resource access from different, from different uh, user communities, and uh, most lately in 2016 with our writable non-clustered column store indexes. I want to show you how that works. Now traditionally, transactional systems capturing business activity, writing it into your OLTP databases, after hours on batch, batch data movement into data warehouses, and then only hours or maybe even a whole day later, business users are able to see what happened in the business. So if there's a if there's a problem, you don't know about it till the next day, and then you sometimes can't act on it until the day after that. So what we want to be able to do here is while that data is going straight into that transactional system, keep an Keep an analytical index of that data to enable reporting on that data as it happens, right? To make it really super fast to, to do this reporting off of your operational databases. So to get, to let the users get the data quickly and to minimize the impact on your, on your transactional system. To take your queries down from minutes to seconds to enable that real time operational analytics. Let me show you how that works. Switch over here to my, uh, my transactional system, which here is Management Studio. Now I have a traditional kind of reporting query here that I that I might want to run against my operational system. It looks through all of my sales order details and finds my top 10 products. Now to, to run this query, I've got to scan a lot of data. Now in the traditional uh, model, this gives me a clustered index scan of Here's 20 million rows being scanned uh, to find the find my top 10 products. Now this query takes a while. It takes over six seconds of CPU time. So I can run that on a data warehouse, but can I really run a query like that directly against my OLTP database? I'd be really worried about that. So what I want to do is create this non-clustered column store index. This will create a memory optimized super compressed column store index on top of my sales order data and keep it in sync as, as data is written um, into, the, into the underlying system. So I'm going to take a few seconds here to, to build that index. I'm up to 20 million rows here in my, in my sales order detail, so that all has to get nicely scanned and nicely compacted into uh, in memory columnar segments. That should be done in just a second here. All right. Now I want to kick off my workload. Now I'm actually doing the inserts, my online workload, inserting orders uh, at, at, at high speed into, uh, into this database. Now while that insert activity is going on, I want to run that same, OL, that same reporting query directly against the OLTP table while the inserts are happening. First time I run it, it took three seconds. Second time uh, down to zero seconds. Wait a few, wait a minute and run it again. Once again, take a look at the execution plan here and it's different. 
I now have, you see over here, it starts with a, with a column store index scan. The column store index scan is able to scan just the columns that I'm interested in, and they're scanned out of the in-memory columnar index, which is very, very efficient to scan. Note, I still scan all the rows, 21 million rows scanned in this query, but it's much, much faster. This query that took over six seconds of CPU time, now with the, with the column store index on the OLTP table, takes 1.25 milliseconds of, uh, 125 milliseconds of CPU time, much, much faster. Fast enough and cheap enough that I could run these reports directly against my OLTP database. Now, if you don't want to run it directly against the OLTP database, they still can run these queries against a secondary replica. If I create the columnar index on my primary replica, it'll be available on the secondary, and that same super fast query will be available on a secondary replica with uh, always on and um, with, with absolutely no impact on my my uh, primary replica and OLTP workload. So operational insights directly from OLTP data, great feature uh, lit up by SQL Server 2016 with non-clustered column store indexes, read committed snapshot isolation, and resource governor. Number two, advanced analytics in the database, right? More and more users are wanting to do advanced statistical and analytical models against the database to create predictions against the data. But traditionally, we had to extract the data from the database, take it over to the analysis engine, and run our advanced analytics on it. Um, with SQL Server 2016, we're changing that by building R directly into the SQL Server database engine so that you can, instead of bringing the data to the, to the analytics, you can send the analytics to the data. Right? And so you can have R models right in the database, interoperable with T-SQL, and uh, you can get advanced real-time analytics against the data. Uh, and take your open source R packages and run them at massive scale and in memory with, uh, with the SQL Server database engine. Third way to get insight unlock insight from your data is to get insight easily from big data. Now, my customers are all talking about big data, and they all want to find a way to get insight from large data sources that they've never been able to wrangle before and stuff into a relational database. So a lot of them are very interested in, in Hadoop. They're building things with Hadoop, but there's a... But we want to take the complete complexity out of reporting and managing large uh, uh, big data data sources with Hadoop, and we're doing that with Polybase. It's the ability to have SQL Server as the front door to your Hadoop data store. For SQL Server to be able to load Hadoop data into relational, take relational data, export it into Hadoop, or run queries directly over Hadoop, or joining relational data with Hadoop data. So it's a great feature to allow you to unlock that data that's in the big data, the unstructured data, uh, but with the ease of use and, this, and the tool ecosystem that you know and love with SQL Server. The, number th uh, the next one is about end users, about letting end users get directly to the data where it's appropriate and doing it with retaining control and security of the data. Now, the value here is that end users are the ones who get the value from the data, and they're the ones often who understand how, what they want and how, to, and, and, and how to put that together and create that value. So we want to empower the end users to get to the data and remove the, the, some of the machinery that we have to put in place between end users and data. And there's a number of features, uh, some of them new, some of them existing, that really help make this scenario real in SQL Server 2016. Uh, first. New feature, row-level security directly in the database so that end users can see the right data, connect to it using their own identities and see data that they're allowed to see. Dynamic data masking so that data can be secured at a column level and transformed or obfuscated before it's sent to the users. Also, direct query in tabular models, so analysis services models that query straight through to the underlying data source and apply the security at the data source. I'll dig into this a little bit. 
Row-level security, it's about fine-grained and transparent application security. So either having multiple applications or multiple users connecting directly to the database, but having the results that they see filtered by security policies that you administer centrally. Right? Transparency of the application into the end user, but allows you to apply um, apply uh, logic directly against the directly against the tables and queries that they see, so they see only the data that they should see. Now, a companion feature to that is dynamic data masking, where you can uh, ensure regulatory compliance and protect sensitive data by masking out certain columns of data in, in your data, so that when an application or a user connects to the database, uh, some of them see the, the real raw data, some of them see, have it transformed and masked for them, so that, say, you can't see social security numbers. The next way to unlock value from your data, and I'm very excited about this one, is mobile reports and dashboards, really making this scenario simple uh, and beautiful. To be able to take business insight and visualization and deliver it all the way out to the end users uh, and those decision makers wherever they are, whether that's an executive audience uh, on the go or, or operational people out there in the field um, on their devices, iOS, Android, or Windows. And this feature is lit up by uh, new SQL Server Reporting Services portal and the modern uh, and the modern mobile reports uh, in Reporting Services 2016, and by Power BI and the Power BI app and the Power BI service. I want to show you that just a little bit. So here you see the new Reporting Services uh, dashboard. Really, really excited about this one major facelift for reporting services. KPIs directly in the dashboard um, and visualizations of, of what you're going to see. Here, these are the new mobile reports and dashboards. So from a corporate user in their browser or a corporate user using a, using a large format device like an iPad, they can see these beautiful full functioning um, dashboards. These same dashboards are rendered into the native Native, uh, the native, the native apps using uh, using the Microsoft Power BI app. So the same dashboard that a corporate user sees in their browser, that same user would see on their iOS, Android, or Windows device using the Power BI app from their app store. Now this scenario is also enabled by the Power BI service and the Power BI desktop so that users can create great BI content in Power BI and publish that content to the, Power, to the Power BI service, where it can be consumed by other users using the Power BI native apps or their, or their browser. So mobile reports and dashboards. Immersive, interactive reports with Reporting Services 2016. Beautiful end-user created content with Power BI all delivered to their, to their mobile device on every major mobile platform. So super exciting stuff with Reporting Services 2016 and Power BI. So that's the five ways. Um, call to action, go test drive 2016. It's in release candidate now. It's out very soon, so go to uh, Microsoft.com, search for SQL Server 2016. You can download uh, the ISO of the release candidate or provision it in Azure and, and pick the tires and play with it. Uh, also, visit our uh, past MTC Studio sessions and register for upcoming sessions. Please visit us at aka.msmtcstudio and visit our uh, Channel 9 page at aka.msmtcstudio9. Well, thank you, everybody. And we move now back to Kevin with the Q&A session. Kevin? Everybody was able to get some information from that session. Now, this one was intended to be a high-level overview. If you have any uh, additional questions, uh, we recommend you also reach out to your account rep or your Microsoft um, partner that you're working with who may have recommended you to see this, or if you found it on your own, uh, reach out to your local Microsoft office, uh, and they should be able to help you. Again, the call to actions, as you see here, are uh, test driving SQL Server 2016, 
going to some previous sessions that we have, and also we have some upcoming sessions around data as well for this entire month. We've kind of called it a data month, if you will. Uh, we are taking live questions if anybody has them, and uh, we will answer them. So uh, just, a, just a recap here on a couple of things while questions are coming in. The one thing about SQL Server 2016 is that it is available right now in a preview. We are, I believe, on release candidate two, maybe three. Uh, and it should be out in full um, release towards the end of this year. But right now, we are uh, plowing forward with, with, the, with the stack. Everything you saw today is available for you to test out and drive yourself. So I highly recommend you take some time and leverage the tool and play with it. There's some labs and various other things that are available for you when you download it. A couple of questions have come in. Let's see them really fast. Let's, uh, let's see, will SQL 2016 be able to connect to our O365 instance and consume Office graph data? So that's a good question. Um, there are connectors to Office 365 from SQL Server. Uh, specifically with Office Graph, I'm not Sure, we can follow up with that question, and we, uh, I'll, I'll take note of that and contact you directly. But uh, it's a very good question. But it does have Office 365 connectors. Now, whether it's Office Graph capable, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Can you give me an example of how this applies to small businesses? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. You know, a lot of small businesses today are consuming still vast amounts of data and need to... Um, really derive insights to that data in ways that, you know, in the past were limited to large businesses. So the one thing I'd suggest is depending on the type of data that you're trying to consume, uh, what data you need, there's still a, a need for most, whether you're big or small, uh, to be able to have that real-time data analytics. Listen, companies today are really, even small companies or what are perceived as maybe a, a, a very small staff are are able to derive you know, vast amounts of information from what little data they have. And quite often, if you, are, if you do have real-time data uh, that you want to be able to build reports or, or be able to have insights into, you know, it, it really doesn't matter the size of the company. It really matters what you're trying to do with your data. We have things in future sessions we're going to talk about with streaming analytics and being able to have, even before the data hits the database, actually creating dashboards and reports and KPIs. So depending on what you're trying to achieve uh, with your data, it really doesn't matter where you're, whether you're big or small. Uh, the, the data that you have um, available to you and, and can do reactive, sorry, uh, proactive and predictive decision making is really the key. So uh, these tools that we have in SQL 2016 uh, make that achievable in relatively easy fashion. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of development time. It doesn't take, uh, in some cases, it doesn't take any development time at all. Uh, all that capability is available to you right out of the box uh, with li limited um, or, or li little development. So that's some other questions that have come up in the past. Uh, are around what is and isn't available with the product. Uh, everything you saw today is available in our SQL 2016 product. There's nothing to add on. There's no add-ons to it. So if you have SQL Server 2016, uh, everything you saw today and more, there are many, many new features that are coming out um, besides what you saw today. Uh, but they're all available in the product, so there's no additional purchases. Even uh, Power BI, if it's not here in the call to action, but if you'd like to test drive Power BI, you can go to powerbi.com and test drive that for free. Actually, you can use it for free. Uh, there's, there's a free and a paid version, but the free version is free as long as you're using that. And there are some capabilities in the paid version that you might want to look into, but you can test drive that now for free as well. And that can hook directly into your on-premises SQL server or a cloud IaaS version of SQL if you, if you choose as well. Uh, another question is, let's see, is the mobile reports, let's see, is there a click-through to get into the data further? Um, yeah, so with mobile reporting, so I, I believe you're talking about the, uh, the phone-based mobile reporting. Uh, you actually can drill down into it just like you can the rich web uh, interface. 
So if you have a report that you've published and there's drill down capability in that report, uh, the mobile version also has the same drill down capability. So you can uh, go into it even from your mobile device, whether it be a phone or tablet. We showed a phone, but you can use a tablet just as well. So that's uh, a very good question. Uh, yeah, all that drill down capability is available to you. All right, well, um, I don't see any more questions coming in. Uh, I'll give it another minute, but uh, one, one last time, uh, please uh, check out SQL Server 2016. Uh, check out our channel. Uh, and if you want to join fu future sessions, please feel free to uh, register for those as well. Oh, yeah, so a question around uh, Azure uh, came in uh, and how Azure can help small companies. Uh, we actually have a free trial of Azure. You can set up a SQL Server 2016 instance today in Azure for free and play with it without having to have any infrastructure. Uh, you can stand that up uh, in about 10 minutes once you sign up and you get credit for that free account uh, for the first month and you can test drive it today. Uh, in addition, from a scalability perspective, if you need to scale up or scale down with, Azure, with your SQL instance, you can do that as well, easily with the Azure portal by changing your compute requirements and uh, really start provisioning and, and using this in a, in a relatively short fashion. What is that? What is that? Oh, <laughs> another question came in. What is Azure? Yes, thank you. Uh, so Azure is our uh, cloud-based uh, services. Uh, many of you have heard of cloud. Well, cloud has a, a number of different capabilities and services. And in Azure, we have IaaS, which is your typical infrastructure as a service, or uh, let's say virtual machines or, or a virtual data center. Uh, we also have PaaS services or platform as a service that allows you to uh, consume things, let's say like a, a SQL database without having to worry about the infrastructure or the operating system and patching and updates, but just creating and using a database. We also have a number of other services in there uh, as well, including data storage and, um, and service consumption uh, objects such as RESTful services and websites. Uh, you can set up a website today in, in Azure for free and run it as long as you like, actually. So um, very good questions. Anything else that you have over there, Mr. Director? No, we're good. Um, all right. Well. Uh, no further questions. If you have, again, uh, any follow-up, please reach out to your Microsoft representative. Um, and in the meantime, we will see you on our next MTC session.